Are you satisfied with your understanding of sustainability? If not, like me, imagine a journey together, a pluralistic one, with innovators, startup, academia, NGO, all together looking for solution to the greatest challenge of our time. I'm Samuel Ettini, and this is The Sustainability Journey. Welcome to another wonderful episode. Today we are going again around, around the world and we are here in Kenya. And I'm very pleased and honored to welcome here Esther Altofer, who is the Managing Director in Kenya for Sistema Bio. Thank you so much, Esther, for being here and for the wonderful job you are doing. So I'm Esther. I, was, uh, I come from a Swiss family. I'm Swiss and from the German-speaking part from both of my parents. But I was born and raised in France and from a very early age in a very international environment, going to an international school, being exposed to many different cultures. Also from a very young age, traveling and being very privileged to travel quite a lot. Um, I moved myself, my younger brother, younger sister to Togo and Benin. I was nine years old. Um, so this was really the first Africa experience for me. That was probably 1998. And uh, really being understanding for the first time and seeing and experiencing that people live without electricity, uh, people don't eat chocolate when they want to, as a child, uh, don't maybe don't have toys to mm. play with. And this was really like, a very important experience for me in mm. hindsight. Later as a teenager, I traveled to Chile and to Burkina Faso and mm. always tried to be involved in, in understanding and supporting the, the communities where, where I could. That's also when I learned that maybe NGOs and the humanitarian approach isn't necessarily the adapted to every circumstance mm -hmm. uh, and started to also be curious about other ways to solve social problems mm -hmm. that are not purely aid-based mm -hmm. and having foreigners coming for, for help. And then I started studying, uh, got really, really interested into renewable energy, mm -hmm. agriculture, learned about climate change, uh, started to take some important like steps to change my lifestyle, stop mm -hmm. eating meat, tried to reduce pain as much as I could and uh, not buy clothes all the time. So I really got very interested into how we need to change mm. um, individually and as a society to, to reduce our carbon footprint and started looking at my career still being a student mm. and how I can have a meaningful job that mm. contributes to reducing climate change in the space of energy and agriculture. And that's when I found out about social business and yes. the fact that we can combine actually having a social impact and solving environmental problems through a private sector approach and not a purely humanitarian yes. basis. And that really became a calling. I started working in tech investing and later in microfinance. Oh, interesting. Um, lived in Bolivia and Mexico. And in Mexico, I discovered in 2014 Sistema Bio. Wonderful. And then there started your journey with the business for good exactly. and the big Hope movement and the work they are doing also. It's, it's really interesting also how your early childhood and also the experience that you had really shaped the way and your sense of urgency and agency, you know, to do something about our societal environmental problem. And I want to talk about a bit the problem, you know, which problem then we'll discuss about Sistema Bio is trying to solve and uh, so I'll start at a macro level and yes. then zoom in, but uh, I mean, it's not a secret that the climate change is here, uh, that there's no concrete action from governments and uh, large corporations, or at least not enough to uh, go towards the 1.5 degree scenario. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're observing every day loss of biodiversity, loss of uh, primary forests, and uh, the vast majority of people living in the United States and in Europe, having a very, very high carbon mm. footprint and taking only very limited steps to change mm. that. Um, so that concerns me mm. because I feel like climate change is the overarching problem of our future. Um, mm. It will have, it's a problem of social injustice. Mm. Um, what, what develops countries and privileged people, their behavior is affecting people every day in developing countries. We see in Kenya mm -hmm. droughts, we see flooding. Uh, the lake we're looking at has been flooded. The farmers around it are waiting for rain, which has been delayed. 
and so we see the, the impacts firsthand yes. and this will lead to more migration it will lead to more wars and mm. conflict and smallholder farmers talking about kenya but also many other countries traditionally cook with firewood with charcoal with lp gas which are all very unsustainable cooking fuels uh, from an environmental perspective but also extremely costly yes um, the cost of lp gas is at an all-time high mm. in kenya and this all contributes to a, an expensive and unsustainable way of producing food. yes it's really interesting, you know, your analysis, because it's really tackling all the holistically the, the situation and also the challenges that especially that um, the smallholder farmers. And then now it comes the system of bio, you know, how you are tackling holistically this problem. I mean, I'm incredibly passionate about system of bio. Um, mm. I've been uh, really amazed by the solution, the, mm. the holistic solution that a biodigester brings to a, a single household uh, together with the systemic change that this mm. can bring. And from, from the first day, I really fell in love with a biodigester. And this Systema Bio is um, a company that produces, installs, and finances biodigesters. Mm. So for a small-scale farmer, a biodigester is a system, mm. um, it's in, compare it with a big bag i don't yeah. like it but you can compare it to a big bag where every day at a smallholder farm you have two to three cows or more you mm. take the waste every mm. day and you put it into the biodigester yes. you mix it with water and then a natural process within the reactor is going to produce biogas which can be linked directly through a pipe to your kitchen where you can then cook with clean and renewable energy. It's, On wow. the other side will come out biofertilizer, which mm -hmm. is a liquid organic fertilizer that can be applied directly to your crops and has been proven to drastically increase the yield of the crops through better soil nutrition and can eliminate or at least strongly reduce the need for chemical fertilizer. This is very interesting and it's really an holistic solution that uh, solves the problem of energy. I want to, to ask, what is your is the history of, history of Systema Bio and your business model? Yeah. Um, so Systema Bio started in Mexico. Yes. Uh, in 2000, it really started in 2007 when our founder saw for the first time in Mexico a biodigester. Yes. Uh, and it was a low quality biodigester, almost handmade, um, but he saw the huge potential in really using, creating value from waste. And he started to think about how he, he can make this product better, higher quality, and develop really the strongest product that exists even today in the market. And also a whole model around this that proved the availability and affordability of mm. this product for small so in 2010, he met our co-founder mm -hmm. uh, and they started the company officially in Mexico. And at that time, we were testing the product, uh, making sure that everything mm -hmm. works and also figuring out how we can make this afford. So in 2012, they started a pilot of asset financing uh, where we would install the biodigester and the farmer would pay as they save firewood, charcoal, or LP gas. And the idea was that Every, all the money you would spend on cooking fuels before, mm. you would spend it in repaying your loan and month by month. And after a year or two, you would become the owner of your biodigester and have free energy uh, in your home for over 20 years at least. Wonderful. And uh, this is really interesting because especially, you know, access to credit and the problematic that, uh, I mean, uh, that um, small scale farmer have. And then maybe... I want to, to share especially some stories because that is what connects people. Can you share a bit some impact stories from uh, your work and especially how you have transformed the lives in Kenya? Yeah, I mean, I can give one example that, that is really close to, to my heart because mm. it's the first, our very, very first uh, Sistema Bio user in Kenya. So I mentioned that we're a Mexican company. Initially, yeah. uh, as we grew in Mexico, we started uh, expanding opened an office in South America and in, in Kenya, we launched in 2017 and mm. today we're also in India. Oh. And uh, the first 
customer that we have in Kenya. His biodigester was installed in November 2016, and his name is Samuel Kimani, and his wife is called Grace Cherry. And uh, they live in Kiambu County. And I visited them a few months ago, and their biodigester is still working after almost almost five years yes. plus uh, now. And they used to cook with charcoal. They used to cook with firewood. Uh, the kitchen was outside. Um, before you install a biodigester, the, the kitchen is dark. It's mm. outside. It's full of soot and it smells like smoke. They're cooking on the floor almost mm. with charcoal and firewood. Their backs hurt, their lungs hurt, they cough. Mm. Um, cooking with firewood has, mm. uh, and charcoal has very, very strong negative impacts on yeah. women's health. And they were spending a lot of money. It's not like this mm. was free energy. Not only is it damaging, time consuming, but it's also very costly mm. so uh, from time to time they would complement with lp gas and they would spend over 50 dollars a month in wow. cooking fuel and in some cases this represents up to 30 percent of the household's like mm. available income being spent on cooking fuel mm. it's uh, one of the biggest household expenditures mm. And um, they have a beautiful coffee farm. Uh, they also have a very beautiful small garden where they produce their own vegetables. And they're now 100% applying the organic fertilizer to the coffee mm. plants and to their garden. And their life has really been transformed. And they have actually become our like strong ambassadors mm. in their community. We now call their street the Sistema Streets. <laughs> Almost every farmer uh, who has animals, who has livestock, mm. owns a biodigester there. Mm. So, so this is how you go from uh, changing the life of one household through giving them access to clean and renewable energy, to organic fertilizer, creating value from their waste, to one village at a time, a more resilient and more sustainable way of, of living and a more sustainable community. We've seen especially during COVID, uh, our customers mm. were so resilient. They didn't yeah. have to leave the house to buy external inputs. Um, they didn't have a shortage of chemical fertilizer because all the supply chains collapsed because they produced their own mm. fertilizer. And this story of resilience is something that we do one household at a time. And progressively, our vision at, at Sistema Bio is that as we install and scale, um, mm. by 2030, we can contribute to reducing 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions wow. through biodigesters. So that, it's very ambitious. That's ambitious, uh, but it's, it's possible. I, I like your passion. I like your eye shines yes. and your voice because it, you can see that the passion and the drive that is uh, behind your work. Let me ask, how far have you reached since the first biodigester? What is the impact now? Yeah. How many, how many transformation life have you impacted? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So um, globally, uh, we have now impacted over 35,000 farms. Wow. And uh, I forgot the number of greenhouse gases, but mm. it's, it's a massive contribution yes. to reducing greenhouse gases. Um, we consider in a, in a very conservative estimate that a small biodigester sets up to eight tons of CO2 equivalent per year, uh, which lifespan is, is 20 years uh, for one of our biodigesters. So um, we can really, uh, as we scale, contribute to, to reducing greenhouse gases globally. Wow. Um, and, and in Kenya, we now have over 5,000 customers. Uh, we're planning to double this number over the next 18 months and to probably accelerate the growth even further. So you are exponentially growing exponentially. And, uh, and then that's a lot and a huge reduction. And then this does not take into account all the social impact, especially the time poverty and the livelihood announcement for people and especially also, and also the health issues and, and especially they affect mostly women and, and girls that are there. So it's, it's an incredible impact, 5,000 plus and doubling. I mean, congratulations on the work. For, and talking about the effort, the, the togetherness of the effort. I mean, how many people have you impacted directly also with your team and, and your work? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we started with two people uh, yes. in 2017 uh, and... Uh, and today we're 70 full-time employees and we have over 100 independent sales agents and independent technicians who make a livelihood out of working with Sistema Bio. Every 
Wow. That's a very impactful. I mean, yeah. now, Sistema Bio is not a company like Yada. I mean, she's part, she's part of the system of a movement that is uh, started I mean, now a decade ago, more than a decade ago. It's a certified B Corp. I want to ask which have been the advantages of certification and how that certification is aligned with your value. Yeah, I think for us, I actually initiated the certification of B Corp in 2016 because I thought it was really important to be part of a larger mm. movement uh, that advocates for a change mm. in business as usual and into taking into account uh, social and environmental impacts mm. in our way of doing business. Since Sistema Bio has such a strong social and environmental mm. core, uh, it ended up being more of a validation and external approval for us um, because we all, all of our employees or 90% of our employees come from rural communities. Mm. Uh, our product has a direct impact mm. on reducing poverty, uh, protecting the environment. So everything we do is so focused already mm. on social and environmental impacts but it's been really helpful to join a global movement mm. and to have this, this validation um, to be a B Corp and to help continue to influence that it is possible to combine social and environmental impacts with a profitable business model, which is what we're uh, working on at Sistema Bio. Wonderful. And it really touch, you know, the validation. You are already, let us say, a proto B Corp already a exactly. social enterprises and then you validate it and uh, i can see also as a, as a matter of recognition and pride i mean to be to be certified and to have the big you have said that you are going to 70 employee and then of course one of the tenets also for uh, the certification also the diversity how the inclusion and especially i'm very proud also to see you know a woman ceo a woman director which is not still not it's, it's changing but it's not still that common thing to think uh, especially in this in, in our country so how do you foster you know especially in your context the next generation of leader in the biogas and especially women i mean i really care a lot about women empowerment at all levels and at sistema bio i'm lucky in a mm. sense to have a, a man CEO, Alex Nixon, who, who really cares a lot mm. about gender balance mm. and, and gender equity. And this is um, something that has really helped us mm. uh, in general. In, in my case, I uh, have really focused on um, developing women leaders mm. in my team. Uh, in the leadership team, we are now we're four women out of no, five women out of seven Wow. leadership team members, uh, which is something I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, and, and at some point, my team asked me to hire a man because we <laughs> didn't have uh, enough diversity. Um, so, so I did, and we now have two men as well. But it's really, really exciting for me to see women grow as leaders within Sistema Bio. Uh, we have great examples of one of my colleagues started as a cleaning lady, then became mm. in charge of administration and is now our operations officer in charge of all of our fleet of cars and, and many other mm. works. And this is something that we care about mm. in Sistema Bio in general, um, but I think I um, care about it a bit more than, mm. than average. And of course, I always want to have diversity. Uh, so uh, it's not only women at, at all costs, but, but it's really about recognizing that it is harder for women and especially in rural contexts mm -hmm. or other contexts um, to become leaders mm -hmm. and, and giving them a, an enabling um, environment and empowering them, challenging them to a local Kenyan woman replace me one day uh, when, when it's the right time for me to move to the next to the next challenge to the next country uh, it is interesting and, uh, and i really like you know your passion and the work there especially for the context especially it's difficult as you said for women to emerge and so uh, okay chances that you offer are really are really crucial to to foster the next generation and then you know we are approaching the end and i i you already said a lot i mean i can see now you're part of the change makers uh, really supporting the communities also around and we are over, also overlooking yeah important water towers. I want to ask you which is your call uh, for action to action for, for, 
Yeah, I would like to send two different calls yeah. to action. Um, I think for anyone who is listening to us from a developed country uh, in Europe or in the United States, or, uh, I really my call to action is um, that future generations are counting on us, on the missing that generation right now, to press change mm. the, our lifestyle, to contribute to the most Calculate your carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, today in France, where, where I come from, CO2, uh, per CO2 equivalent per year, per person. And the, where we need to reach uh, our, our behaviors. Um, and of course, the richest people uh, are the ones with the highest carbon um, uh, so, so really. In I uh, joined a, a climate strike uh, in Nairobi, uh, organized by Fridays for Future, uh, and they were very young people uh, between 18 and 25 who were asking for climate justice. And I really urge any person in developing countries to continue to challenge all society, their governments, but also decision makers in European countries uh, and to always challenge leaders uh, and go to the streets and, and do whatever you need to do to, to create empathy between people who don't want to and, uh, This is where I really believe change will come from is by creating empathy between um, between people and realizing that we're all one, we're all one, uh, and and all we want to do is be happy and live on a healthy planet and have happy children and grandchildren. And I think if we can achieve that in our day to day, wherever we live on the planet, that would be a big uh, achievement. Thank you so much, Esther. This is wonderful. I think the togetherness and the fact that we are all now faced by in the next decade, uh, the choices we will make at every level they are the ones that will impact not just our generation, but the generation that will come in the future and the survival of our planet. Thank you so much, Esther. I, it was a real pleasure to have you. And I'm sure maybe in 18 months we'll come to see if you've reached the 10,000 or You're even welcome. above. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Are you satisfied after this wonderful episode? Let's continue together our sustainability journey.